Yes, Lord. You found that you would discover the decoration of the psalmist. He says, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all the stars of light. Praise him, you heavens of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. Father God, we thank you now. We exalt you now. We praise you. We honor you. Lord, we magnify you for you are good and you are God. God, we thank you, Father God, for being able to praise you. Thank you, Lord, that we can praise you from earth to heaven. Lord, we praise you, Father God, for you are the great King. You are the great God. You are the one who keeps us. You are the one who blesses us. God, we praise you, Father God. We realize that the moon and the stars praise you. We realize, Father God, that the heavens of heavens praise you. God, we realize that the angels praise you. And we thank you for the privilege of praising you, Lord. God, you've given us another chance. You've given us an opportunity just to come to the house of prayer and praise you. And Lord, we thank you now. God, we honor you now. Lord, we magnify you. Lord, we thank you for church. We thank you for church setting. We thank you for church on the airwaves. And Lord, we praise you. We come now today, Father God, thanking you for just being who you are. For being the great God, the great King. For comforting us in times like these. For blessing us in times like these. And we magnify you, Lord. We bless your holy name. Now, Lord, we pray for these musicians. Yes, Lord. We pray for the congregation. Yes, Lord. We pray, Father God, that we will lift our voices, praise you with the instruments, and praise you with our mouths. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of preaching. Yes, we thank you for your priest's word even right now. Bless us to be encouraged. Bless us to walk with you, Lord. Bless us, Father God, that we will be about your business. That we will not only have church today, but have church all week long. That you, Father God, will be our great God and be our great King. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to walk through the building. Make your presence known. Bless us, Father God, to be about your business. That life will roll on just a little while longer. And we will confess to men, women, boys, and girls that Jesus is the Christ who has died for us and given us hope. Lord, we thank you now. We thank you for the victory. We thank you for worship. We thank you for the privilege. We thank you, Lord, for being here. And we thank you for where we're going. Lord, we ask you to bless us as we come now to lift our voices to you in praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God.
lift our voices and lift our hands to him, for he is, he is worthy to be praised. Let me call your attention to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 10. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 10. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 10. In the New Testament, the book is 1 Timothy. The chapter is 4, verses number 10. When you found it, I'm reading from the New King James Version. When you found it, you will discover these words. For to this end, we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the savior of all men, especially of those who believe. I want to talk about hope in God. Hope in God. In the living God. Hope in the living God. Our circumstances around us are great. Our situations are many. Our depressions are multitudes. But we got a hope in God. Yes. Life as we once knew it has really disappeared. But we still got a hope in the living God. Yes, sir. Life has given us curveball after curveball, sliders after sliders. But we must hope in the living God. There are things around us that cause us to wonder, is God listening? I want to say to you today, regardless of what you do, please, my dears, please, family, continue to hope in the living God. Yes, we are at that point now that the Apostle Paul writes to, to Timothy, and he warns Timothy as he warns the church today, that there will be expressly false teaching. There will be those who would teach heresy. There will be those who, who carry on. And, and in the last days, there will be many. It says in verse number one that the Spirit express, expressly say that in the latter days, some will depart from the faith, giving he to deceiving spirits and doctrines of devils. Yeah, men, women, boys, and girls all around us, they're giving in to false doctrines. And if it's not of God, it has to be of the devil. That's right. The problem with us, as seen in 1 Timothy chapter 4, is that men are playing games with God. They have gotten to a point in their lives where wrong begins to look like right. And right has been labeled as wrong. There used to be a time that respect was on the table. It used to be a time that, that we respected each other and we looked out for each other. Yes, sir. But now we have come under this false doctrine that we are better than somebody else because we've been knowing the Lord for two days. Paul says to Timothy, in the latter days, and I want to tell you, we are living in the last days. Yes, sir. Yes. We are living in the latter days. He says, in the latter days, men will be cropping up all over the places. There will be many who will walk away from the faith. There will be those who take heed to deceiving spirits and to doctrines of devils. I mean, it's obvious that some things are of the devil. Yeah. 
And the saying used to be, if, if it quacks like a duck, if it walks like a duck, if it wobbles like a duck, it is a duck. I want to tell you this morning that, that it's not hard to find false doctrine. I mean, they are everywhere. They are all over the places. And people are leaving the faith of Jesus Christ to follow false doctrine. Paul says, Timothy, I warn you. And I'm saying to, to you today, be warned, be foretold, be warned that false doctrine is all around. We have preachers that are filling up Colosseum to blow on people, to spit on them, to lay their hands on them. And these things are not of God. We are called to lay hands on the sick and they will recover, but God ought to get the glory, not man. False doctrine is all around us. And people who grew up in church, people who grew up in Sunday school are at the point where they're falling out with the Lord and falling in with false doctrine. Verse 2, the verse 2, Timothy says, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2 says, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, they have turned away from the truth and they are seeking after lies. A lie will run a mile before the truth put his shoes on. A lie will spread like wildfire before anybody would listen to the truth. Paul says to Timothy, as I say to you today, there will come a time and that time is now that men would rather be entertained by lies than the truth. Says to us, says to us today that our conscience have been seared by a hot iron. Well. And it has been ingrained in some people's mind. It has been scorched and burned in some people's mind that what the devil is telling them, it is right. Mm -hmm. They have fallen out with God and fallen in to false doctrine, and their conscience have been led astray. Mm -hmm. Verse 3 says, forbidding to marriage, forbidding to marry. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from food which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. We're at that point where people would much rather shack than marry. They would much rather entertain stuff like, like I got to try the car before I buy the car. They would much rather entertain, even in same-sex marriage, it's not marriage at all. It's stuff that they got together, they concocted, and they got to a point in their lives where they think right is wrong and wrong is right. Yeah. So I say to you, when he talks about marriage, he's talking about a natural born woman and a natural born man getting together in holy wedlock. Right. It can't be holy right. unless it's God's way. Right. It can't be of God unless it's God's way. Yeah, we need forgiveness and we all do, but the text declares in the last days, they will forbid people to marry. In other words, they come up with some other stuff. And then they would feel, refuse to marry. They, they, they don't value the sanctity of marriage. They do their own thing. He deals with the fact that men will even come up with some ideas about food. About how food will, will misuse you. And, and this food was given to idol gods. And, and the, the fact that, that you ought not eat this because it is poisonous. Well. But God says it was all created by him. Mm -hmm. And you ought to receive it with thanksgiving. By those who believe we receive it with thanksgiving. Because we know which is true. And it says to us this morning that we ought not walk around and eat without thanking God for it. That's right. That's right. 
children in school, they, 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 they're reared in church. They, they know they ought to bless over their food. So in, when it's time to sit down and eat their food, they rub their faces to hide from their peers that they're praying. They look away instead of looking down and talk to God. Pure pressure has caused them not to be a blessing to their food, not to call on God for their food. But I say to you today, you better not eat anything or drink anything without thanking God for it first. You know, give thanks. Give thanks for your soda water. Give thanks for your water. Give thanks for your sweets. Give thanks for your vegetables. Give thanks for your meat. You ought to be thankful to God that you have some. Because I'm well aware of folk who don't have. I'm well aware of somebody that wish they had something to eat. But they just don't have it. So whenever we sit down, we ought to say, Lord, thank you for the food. That's right. Thank you, Lord, for the food that we're about to receive. We know, God, that if you had not supplied it, we wouldn't have. Thank you, Lord, for the food. And then we ought to say, Lord, now I need you to bless this food. <laughs> because I know, Father God, if it's going to be blessed, you're going to be the one that bless it. Bless, bless this food. Because, God, I know the truth. And the truth of the matter is, God, I wouldn't have if you had not given. I would not have if you had not supplied. Lord, I thank you for it, and now I ask you to bless it. I thank you because you've given it to me, and I ask you to bless it because you're the only one that I really want to bless me. That's right. And you're the only one who could possibly bless the food. Verse number four, he says, for every creature is of God and is good. I thought about that thing. All those slides that we don't want anything, anything to do with. <laughs> Even the flies come from God. And all those bugs that we run from, God, the text declares, for every creature of God is good. That means they have a place. <laughs> They have a place in the ecosystem. They have a place in the, in the land in which we live. They just ought not have a place in your house. I remember Big Mama said, when you go to a girl's house and you visit her house, you need to understand she's going to keep the living room clean because that's where guests come. She's going to keep the den area clean because that's where she does her coating. But every time you go to a girl's house, you need to make sure you got to go by the restroom so you can see how she really, really lives. Yeah. And I tell you, Brother Nell, all I went by one girl's house. Uh -oh. <laughs> and when I got to her house, I had to, I had to follow Big Mama's recommendation. I mean, the front room was sparkling, and even when she walked out, she had her heels just right. She was always dressed well, and I knew it would give me the, the thought that her house is all in order. Mm -hmm. But when I went to the restroom, My Lord. it looked like 5 o'clock traffic in Houston. Mm -hmm. It looked like a party was going on on the countertop. Mm -hmm. And when I switched the light on, <laughs> They begin to scatter. And I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about creatures that, that lurk in the dark. So Sister Carter, when I turned the light on, I mean things start running up walls, around the wall, up under the desk, up under the table. That was my last visit. Last really time, morning to go by there. Because I know that God created all creatures for something good, but I don't think that we ought to have a zoo in our house. So, so the truth of the matter is, all creatures is of God and is good. Every creature is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. In other words, the meat that we eat, the vegetables that we eat, the food that we eat, it ought to be received with thanksgiving and we ought to bless it and pray over it. It is good for God, but we ought to take our time and say, Lord, bless it. And we ought not be ashamed. We ought not, I ought not be embarrassed to pray over our food. For he says in the text that, for it is, verse number five, for it is sanctified 
by the word of God in prayer. Not only should we pray over it, we ought to talk, tell God's word about it. We ought to make sure that we put God's word on it because God responds to his word. And we ought to pray. When we pray, we ought to pray God's word. When we pray, we ought to pray over God's word. Let me just share with you. When you pray, you ought to recite to God what God has already said in his word. When you talk to God, you ought to tell God, God, you say it. God, this is what you said in this chapter, in this verse. God, you say it. When everything is not going well, I try to remind God. God, you said, you said, God, that you will rebuke the devour for my sake. God, you said that you would shut the devil down in my household. God, you said, therefore, I am praying what God has said. God, you said that all things work together for me because I love you and I'm called according to your purpose. God, you said that I can do all things. Whether they give or not, I can do all things. God, you said it. So we ought to pray the word of God. Even though, even at our, at our table, we ought to thank him for another day. Even in, in the midst of our food, we ought to be, be gracious unto him and bless his holy name. Yeah, we ought to pray God's word. And not only that, we ought to pray over God's word. When we look into God's word right before we break the book open, right before we look into it, we ought to say, Lord, speak to me through your word. Guide me through your word. Speak to me by way of your word. God, make your word relevant to me and reveal your word to me. Yeah. You ought to pray over God's word. Amen. Because the food is sanctified by the word of God and by prayer. All right. Now, some people don't mind praying God's word. They just take the shortcut around. And they say stuff like this, Jesus will. <laughs> now, what, what does food have to do with Jesus weeping? I still don't know. But what it says to me, it's a lazy Christian that don't even dig in the word enough to hear the word and read the word that they would know what's appropriate to talk about in the word. Even our prayers, our, even, even our prayers have a perfect place and a perfect time. You see, an altar prayer, an altar prayer takes place when, when we pray for anything and anybody. A devotional prayer, we pray that God will make himself real in the room. We pray that God bless his service. Whenever you're praying for devotion, it's not time for you to catch up on your prayers. It is time for you to pray, Lord, we are gathering here today. This is devotional prayer. Lord, we are gathering here in your name today. God, we are, we are calling upon you today to bless us as we go through the service. Right, yeah. Lord, we devote ourselves to you. This is a devotional prayer. Lord, I bless your name for giving us another privilege. This is a devotional prayer. But when we have altar prayer, you can say, God, bless my sister, bless my church, bless my pastor, bless, because we are calling people to the altar. And most of all, when we have altar prayer, we ought to ask God to bless us in our spirit man. So when we sit down to eat, we ought to say our grace and ask God to bless the food. Bless us. <laughs> and, and Lord, whatever you do, Lord, I just want to thank you. For it all, as Paul says to Timothy, come from evil. Verse 6, he says, if you instruct the brethren in these things, he says, in other words, if you tell other men how you live, you tell other men and women the reason why you pray. If you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ. Now, when it used the word minister, it's not just talking about those who stand in the pulpit. The problem with many of us, we think only the people who stand in the pulpit are called to minister. This word minister means one who is a servant, one who is called by God to be a blessing to other people. 
One who is willing to get down and get dirty for the sake of God. So we are called to minister. He says, if you instruct other men, other brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ. He says, and as we minister, we, we nourish in the word of faith. We will be good ministers that are nourished in the word of faith. We will be good ministers that are nourished in the word of faith and of good doctrine, which you have carefully followed. You see, it says here that we've been following a particular doctrine. And we are following the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And as we follow the doctrine of Jesus Christ, what we are doing is we need to hold on to that doctrine. We need to hold on because tomorrow a new doctrine will be on the scene. And the next day, five more new doctrines will be on the scene. Uh, tomorrow, somebody will make a doctrine that will address their dead dog. Every now and then, people make doctrines based on what they're going to, but we have to maintain the word of God. The Sunday school lesson said today, we need to persevere. Yes. We need to hold fast. We need to stick to this doctrine of Jesus Christ and Jesus alone. And Jesus Christ, his doctrine teaches that we trust him, we minister to others by way of him, and we tell men and boys and girls of him, then we are a great minister with a good doctrine, which you have carefully followed. We want to carefully follow this word. We, we don't want stuff to happen. You see, a lot of things are happening now. A lot of things are going on now. A lot of people are under pressure now. If you're going to be a good minister, you need to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ, the doctrine of Jesus Christ, by which you have followed up to now. Big Mom was here, she said like this. The same bridge that brought me over is the same bridge that's taken me back. It, it, it is, regardless of the troubles, regardless of what goes on around us, we cannot lose hope. We got a hope in the living God. And it says to us, we can instruct others. Verse, verse 7 says, But we re re reject profane and old wild fables, and exercise yourself rather to godliness. Old wild fables is what, when people just come up with something. They, they just come up with a fable, a story, to make themselves look good. It is kind of like a person that's standing in a crowd of people and everybody introduced themselves by their first and last name and then a person says, I'm apostle such and such. <laughs> it is something that he or she now have come up with to make themselves look important. Yeah. To make themselves look big and it is a thing that to make others be looked down upon. I quickly asked you, that's what mama named me, bro. It, all you have to do is introduce yourself by your name. That's right. All you have to do, you don't need a degree before or a degree after. That's right. You don't have to interject a, a, a title. All you have to do is introduce yourself by your name, and men will elevate you, not you that's yourself. Right. That's right. That's right. We have, we, we have to watch prophetic thinking, apostolic. And making sure that I'm the right reverend and making sure you know me as the doctor. Just give me your name. All I need to know is your name. I can look you up by your name. I can get to know you by your name. But the moment you throw your title out there, you just lost some folk. Some people don't even like titles. Some people don't even enjoy titles. And you will mess up a good witness. You will mess up a good testimony by your title if you don't watch yourself. God wants to use us. God wants to, to make us well. God wants to bless us. God wants to bless us in a way that we can bless others. But don't let your name, your title, don't let your, 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 all your other shenanigans mess up a good testimony. Just 
minister. Reject wise fables. Reject stuff that people conjured up in the country. Reject stuff that people just coming up with. We're living in a time today where we have experts who have studied diseases for 40, 50 years. But because one ugly man said it was rigged, one ugly man, the orange man, one man who declares that you should not take the vaccine, folk are all scared now. That's right. That's right. You always have to wonder, you always have to wonder if a person tells you not to do it, why did they do it? Right. That's right. You have to wonder if, they, if it's not a conspiracy theory, why, did, why would they first, second, third in line? And then take the word from the experts. I, I told somebody the other day, you know, I, I, I can't compete to Dr. Fauci outside the pulpit. But Dr. Fauci can't compete to me with me in the pulpit. All right, you see, every man has his call. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Fauci obviously has been called to medical diseases that we have never seen before. And they have been putting together a foundation and an infrastructure that will make us well. But what would I look like claiming that I have the answer? So stay away from wise fables. Stay away from this word, this word wise fable. This phrase wise fable now is conspiracy in the 21st century. And we have too many people living in the midst of conspiracy theories and people are dying every day. In my own family, 11, 11 family members. Then another one dies. And then there's a, a group of two, three here. And then there are some that catch it and some get delivered from it. Let me just share with you, beware of the wise fables. Beware of the conspiracy theories. Walk with knowledge and especially the knowledge of God. It says reject this profane and all wise fables. Exercise yourself to godliness. Exercise yourself rather to godliness. Exercise yourself. Make sure that you put forth an effort to be godly. You know, God can, can shield us from a lot of stuff that we didn't get in his way. Verse number eight, first, first Timothy chapter four, first Timothy chapter four, verse number eight says, for bodily exercise, Profits a little. Exercise is good. You ought to get exercise because a body in motion will remain in motion. A body at rest will remain at rest. The major problem with me personally, when I sit too long, I stand up, my back is killing me. But the more I move, the more comfortable I become and the less my back hurts. Right. And besides, at 58, I'm too young to be sitting around doing nothing. That's right. But if you, want, if you want the pain to disappear, just keep stretching, just keep moving. A mass in motion will remain in motion. If you sit too often, you will always be sitting. An object at rest will remain at rest. Right. So the Apostle Paul says here, for the bodily exercise, bodily exercise, it does profit some things. There's a great profit in it. There's a little profit in it. But godliness is profitable for all things. If you walk in godliness, God can bless you. And when you, when you know you hear the stories and, and the testimonies in the church that says, when I was down to my last dime, God walked in right on time. It's some truth in that. See, we don't have to rob God or steal from God because we have a God who shows up in the right time. 
Yes, some of you have resided with the statement, uh, uh, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Yeah, he's always on time, but sometimes I want him to come when I want him. And we have a God like that. Sometimes he will show up when we're in the midst of our trouble. Other times he will show up as we're coming out of our trouble. And other times he will bring us through our trouble. That's right. But he's an on-time God. Oh, yeah. Yes, he is. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. And godliness will profit us in all things. You cannot be God. You can't be him giving. You can't be him saving. You can't beat him serving. You cannot be God no matter how you try. The more you give, the more he gives to you. The more he gives, the more he gives to you. God just keeps right on giving. He says, godliness is possible for all things. Having promise of the life that now is and of which is to come. In other words, God has a way of blessing us right now. Mm -hmm. And he has a greater way of blessing us in times to come. That's right. If you don't get it all over here, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. God has a blessing. The Sunday school lesson says there's a great reward on the other side. The other side. God is going to, if they don't recognize you, if they don't give credit to you, if they don't call your name, don't worry about it. God has a blessing for yeah. you. And the blessing is just your style. It fits you well. It won't hang off for you. You won't have to get it tailor-made because God has already tailor-made it for you. Godliness will profit you everything, all things. He will, he will profit you even when you're not looking for the blessing. God has a way of blessing us because of stuff we've done in the past. A woman prayed for her husband for 20 years and finally came to church, finally came to get to know the Lord. God blesses you because you talked to him about it and you've even forgotten about it. God keeps right on blessing you. Amen. He blesses you because that which is to come. Verse number nine says, this is a faithful saying and worthy of acceptance. God blesses you with things to come, things that we haven't even seen yet. This is a worthy saying. Finally, he says in verse number 10, says to us, for to this end, to, to, to what end? To the end of the fact that the Holy Spirit is speaking in the last days. To the end of the fact that men have turned their backs against the godliness that we serve has turned their backs from God to the doctrines of devils. He's turned away. Men have turned away. He says, to this end, for to this end we both labor and suffer reproach. He says, this word labor, he says, he says we work hard. Because men have made it hard. God hasn't, hasn't left us. We've left God. If somebody say they have gone, they have found themselves far away from God, let me tell you, if you found yourself far away from God, God never moved. That's right, man. I said God never moved. All right. And because God never moved, guess what? God is still where he is and you have moved. That's right. That's right. If you found yourself far away from God, God never moved. And because God has never moved, that means that you have walked away from God. You have walked away from God. You have left God. And you are nowhere near God because you have left God. When it seems like God won't answer, the first question you would need to ask, the first question you need to ask is, God, when did I walk away from you? God, where did I leave you? God, show me where to go back and get back with you. Men have walked away from God and they found themselves in the midst of doctrines of devils. Doctrines of demons. They speak lies. They speak hypocrisy. They have fallen out with God. Isn't that something? They have fallen out with God. They have fallen short. 
They speak lies and people love lies. It says, for to this end, we both labor and we suffer approach. In other words, would you work hard to work for the Lord and you work hard to be a part of God's program. And because you believe in the doctrine of God, you find yourself in the midst of reproach. People misuse you. People, people taunt you. This word reproach means to taunt. And in the NFL, the National Football League, you can't taunt anymore. In other words, you can't make a touchdown. Take, I, I mean, I think it's a little silly, silly myself. You can't make a touchdown and take the ball and wave it in your opponent's face. You can't dance in the midst of your opponent's standing back. You can't do one boy did, did the really crazy dude. He got in, in, the, in the end zone, he lifted his leg like a dog TT. Punchy. The Bible says that when you walk with God, according to 1 Timothy chapter, chapter 4, verse number 10, when you walk with God and when you stay with the right doctrine, when you walk with God, you will enter into a reproach. People going to talk about you. People going to taunt you. People are going to say, I thought she was something. He says you will have reproach. You People will misuse you. People will, will talk behind your back and some will talk in front of your back. They will revile you. And this because we trust in the living God who is the savior of all men, especially those who believe. You see, don't worry about the taunting. Don't worry about the reproach. Don't worry about them reviling you. They're only doing it because of your walk with God. They're only, they're only taunting you because you have decided to be righteous before God. And if you decided to be righteous before God, I said to you, hope in the Lord. He says, we trust in the living God. We need to put our hope in the living God. Regardless of what goes on around us, regardless of our circumstances, in our situations, we hope in God. That's right. We labor. He says, we labor and we suffer. In other words, we work hard. We are servants of the living God. Mm -hmm. We suffer. We, we are revived because of our living with the Lord right. and our righteousness in God. He says, regardless of whatever goes on around you, regardless of how bad it gets, regardless if more people die or not, regardless if more family members lose their lives, whatever you do, make sure you trust and hope in the living God. Right. Hope in him. Hope in the living God. Because we have no other way now. There is no other way to make it other than hoping in the living God. The living God who is the savior of all men, especially those who believe. In other words, and I'll leave you alone, Jesus the Christ is the Savior of the world. Yes, sir. Jesus the Christ. Yeah. <laughs> he made a way for everybody to get to heaven. Right. All right. That's right. Jesus the Christ. Yeah. He made a way for everybody to get to know God regardless of what they've been through. Yeah. Regardless of your background for the rich and the poor. He made a way he made a way for you. He made a way for me. Whether you were born in the backwoods of Louisiana or in the bright lights of Chicago, he made a way for you. Yes, thank you, Lord. Jesus the Christ made a way for you. He did it. The text declares right here in verse number 10, it says we are servants unto the mighty God. Yes. When, when I said to you earlier, don't worry about, don't, don't, don't worry about, don't, don't worry about the titles. Don't, don't worry about whether they call you Mr. or Mrs. Yeah. Don't worry about whether they call you apostle or prophet. Yeah. Don't worry about if they call you doctor or pastor. Don't worry if they call you just as long as they call your name because one of these great getting up morning, he's going to call your name. Yeah. And when he calls your name, don't be concerned about your title. The only thing you need to be concerned about if he calls you servant yeah. and he's going to call you servant, well done. 
Now, in order, in order for you to heal well done, you would have to have done well. You can't heal well done unless you have done well. Make sure you do well down here. Make sure you do well because when he calls your name, he's not calling numbers. He's calling by our names. He says he's the savior of the world, especially those who believe. This Jesus the Christ paid it all for us. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. They nailed him tight. He died out there. He died until the S-U-N refused to shine. He died until the moon dripped down in blood. Jesus the Christ died, I tell you. He died until the earth took on an epileptic fit and began to reel and rock like a drunken man. He died, he died, I tell you. He died so much so until one centurion soldier cried out, surely there must be the Lamb of God. Surely he must be the Son of God. Jesus Christ died on a skull hill called Calvary. They took him down from the cross. He did it for the whole world. They took him down off the cross and they, they laid my Lord and your God in a bar or two. It was a borrowed tomb because he didn't need it too long. It was a borrowed tomb because one day he was going to give Joseph back his brand new tomb. It was a borrowed tomb because early that Thursday morning, early he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He rose for you. He rose for me. He fixed it early that Thursday morning. The devil thought he had it. The grave thought he could hold it. Death thought he could keep it. But early that third day morning, he rose with all power in heaven and earth. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. The final part of verse number 10 says, he fixed it for everybody, including, especially, those who believe. You must believe the story that over 2,000 years ago he died. He was buried in a barber tomb, but early that Thursday morning, he rose from the dead. If you can believe the story today, you can be saved right here, right now, without a good talk, without a piano, without a choir singing. You can be saved right now. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. Would you like to get to know Jesus? He's looking for you. He's begging you to come. He, he's asking you to reach out your hand to him as he's reaching out to you. The door is open. The door is open. The door is open. You ought to come to Jesus. Don't wait till you get it right. You'll never get it right. Check in with Jesus. He can help you get it right. The door is open. Yes, Lord. If you never received Jesus as your personal Savior, you ought to do that right now. While blood is just running warm in your blood in your veins. You ought to do it right now. Whether you're present with us or online, you ought to trust Jesus as your Savior. Just repeat after me and invite him into your life. Lord Jesus. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And thank God. We believe that you're saved. We believe if you pray this prayer, honestly trust in Jesus. As your personal Savior, you believe that you're born again. You're on your way to heaven when you die. There are others of us who, who wrestle. In the midst of these demonic spirits, we wrestle with stuff. I pray that the Lord Jesus blesses us. I pray that the Lord Jesus keeps us. I pray that the Lord Jesus continue to walk with us. I pray that we give God a chance. We give, I pray that we trust him. Hold on to the living God. 
trust in God, hope in God, put our faith in God. Regardless of how bad it gets, Father God, bless us to maintain our hope in you. And Lord, we ask you to be our, be our strength, to be our hope, to be our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. For those who are visiting with us by way of the air or in prison, whatever you do, come by and be a part of the New Beginning Church. If you're looking for a good church home where Jesus is priest, where souls are following Jesus, this is a good moment, this is a good time to get to know him. Inbox me and let me know if you want to get to know Jesus through the New Beginning Church. You want to be a member, inbox me and let me know. We'll be glad to welcome you to the family of faith. Thank God for who he is and what he's already done. We praise God for who he is and what God has already done. He has blessed us again. We just have to hold our hope. Hope in God. Trust in him and he will make a way out of nowhere. Let's trust in God. It is now offering time. It's now time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give to the Lord. If you need an envelope, raise your hand way up in the air and you will be served. If you need an envelope, raise your hand up and you will, you will be served. If you need an envelope. For those of you who are watching online, you can give in one or two ways. First of all, you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com is, is our Zelle account. Or you can mail it in to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 775 4597 Yes, Lord. I will bless the Lord.
why don't we stand and, and give her a loud round of applause for being in our church service today. It is a blessing, it is a blessing to have you present with us in the sanctuary today. We thank you so much. We, it's, it's encouraging to, to somebody, it's encouraging. It's encouraging to somebody to watch you, to see you, to see that you are hungry for the word of God and you won't let things stop you. Thank you so much for, for being in our presence today. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I just want to say my friend, my buddy, number 15, has officially retired. Number 15 has officially retired. And God knows what he's doing. And he knows all about it. So during this period, we uh, we want to make sure that the women of our church reach out to Sister Richard. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we support her in times like these to make sure that she understands that her church is praying for her. Her church is supporting her. Her church is with her. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. On our prayer list, we have Sister Luda Richard and Sister Eloise Johnson in their moments of bereavement. We're praying for Sister Ramonica, Ramona, I'm sorry, Sister Ramona Mathis, Ramona Mathis, and the Davis family, this is Nicole Davis family, we're praying for Sister Ramona Mathis, Sister Davis' mother, who want to lift her up before the Lord. And we're praying for Pastor and Sister Deborah Aaron in the midst of their illness. We're praying, praying for them. And again, I want to ask you for your prayers and the death of one of my cousins. Uh, Henry, Peter, Pete, Pete, anyway. His mother used to sit over here every November and come to our uh, pastor and wife appreciation service, Sister Catherine, anyway. And she showed up the same weekend, a week prior that her husband had passed away. And now one of her younger sons has passed away. And we want to make sure that we do all we can to stay away from COVID-19. But COVID-19 is ravishing people's families. And I want you to lift us up again, as I've asked you probably three weeks ago, to lift our family before the Lord. God knows what he's doing. And we must have hope in the living God. We must have hope in the living, the true and the living God. These are tough times. Buried my aunt Tito yesterday. Cousin passed away, I think, on Saturday. And we want to lift, lift uh, this family and my family before the Lord. Amen. At uh, the funeral service of Minister J.R. Richard. And then after that funeral services, then I hear about another one. And it's just being compiled upon us. I want to say to you, if you're not vaccinated, get vaccinated. Uh, we want to make sure that if you come to this building to worship, that you are vaccinated. Please, if you come to this building for worship, please, ma'am, please, sir, get vaccinated before you come. Because we want to make sure that we do all we can to secure uh, this church and its membership. We don't want to shut the church down again. Uh, we know that vaccinations work, and we want to make sure that we do everything we can. Let's do what we can physically, do what we can in the natural, and watch what God does in the spirit. Just watch what God does in the spirit. Let's stand and be dismissed.
Because we believe that you can do it yes, like no one else can. Yes, we pray for our sister Ramona Mathis. Yes. We pray, Father God, that you continue to heal her, yes, continue to keep her, yes, continue to bless her. Yes. That her families will see the miracles that you are able to do and that you have done. We pray for Sister Davis, Sister Nicole Davis. We ask you to give her strength, give her encouragement. We pray, Father God, for Sister Matthew's husband. We ask you, Father, to, to bless him and walk with him. We pray, Father God, for Sister Lula Richard. Lord, we ask you to bind her mind. Bless her heart. Give her strength. We pray, Father God, that you continue to walk with her. Yes, that you continue to bless her. Yes, Lord. Lord, we ask you to regulate her body, Father God. Yes, we ask you to strengthen her by the name of Jesus. Yes, we ask you to be with her. Yes, we pray for Sister Eloise Johnson. In her time of bereavement, encourage her, Father God. Bless her to recognize that you are God and you are God alone. Lord, we ask you to strengthen her body, strengthen her mind and her spirit. Comfort her in times like these. Now, Lord, we pray for the Woods family. We pray for the Hemingway family. We pray for the Wallace family. Lord, watch over us. Stay in the hand of the devil. Strengthen us, Father God, that we will walk with you. Bless us and know you, Father God, as the great healer, the great comforter, and the great king. Lord, we ask you to have compassion. We pray, Father God, that you bind us up and give our minds peace. Lord, we thank you for the New Beginning Church. We ask you to bless our church to be a beacon light shining in a dark world. Bless our church to be servants unto the Lord. Bless our church, Father God, that we will be about the Lord's business, even in these terrible times. Lord, strengthen our members. Watch over the elderly. Bless our children. In their innocence, Father God, give them direction. Bless students as they go back to school. As politicians play foolish games, we pray for strength and hope and health for our youth and our young people. Lord, bless doctors, lawyers. We, we pray, Father God, that you bless teachers and superintendents, principals and teachers' aides. Lord, bless and keep us. Lord, we ask for a miracle today. We ask you, Father God, to kill off COVID-19. Kill off the virus, Lord. Lord, we ask you to bless us to be healthy. And that every healthy body will give you the glory. That every healthy body will speak for you, Father God. That every healthy body will, will rejoice unto the Lord. Lord, we trust you. 
the only true and living God. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us say together. Amen. God bless you. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. God bless you and God keep you. It's our prayer.